Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial on introducing Beautiful Soup and also page inspection. Here we're going to perform two main tasks. The first is going to be obtaining Beautiful Soup, which is a Python library, and the second is going to be using the page inspector to check out a page for us to scrape. So first of all, what is Beautiful Soup? Beautiful Soup is simply a Python library that is very, very good at web scraping and also data parsing. We're going to be using it for HTML, JSON and XML data, first focusing on HTML and then we'll take a look at JSON and XML in the second half. The great thing about Beautiful Soup is it's very easy to import and extremely easy to use. We'll actually only need a few Beautiful Soup functions to get ourselves all the data we need. Now what about page inspection? It's a very good chance you guys have actually used this tool before, but we're going to show you and just kind of refresh how to use our inspector tool in a web browser. What this does is it allows us to view the HTML, CSS and JavaScript code that makes up a page. And we're going to choose the Wikipedia genome page to examine. We'll kind of go through it quickly together and then I'll let you guys check it out some more after this. So let's first check out Beautiful Soup. In fact, the greatest thing is that we only need to start up a terminal or command line if you're using Windows. And we should be able to install Beautiful Soup just by typing the line uh, pip install bs4. Uh, make sure it's bs4 there. So this is assuming that you have pip installed and you can use these command line tools. Um, you should be able to do this in Mac and Windows. I already have Beautiful Soup 4, that's BS4, <laughs> it's not sure of something else. Um, uh, we already have this installed on my computer, which is why it says requirement already satisfied, but likely this will just take a couple of seconds and it should say that the installation was successful. If we want to make sure that we have the package available, we can actually start a new Python shell and just try to import BS4. And if it works without any errors, then we know we're good to go here. Okay, so we have Beautiful Soup ready for us to use. That's the first half of this tutorial done. What about page inspection? We can go ahead and quit that terminal. And what we're going to do is actually do the Wikipedia. Um, we'll actually just go to Wikipedia here. And we're just going to search the genome page. Um, honestly, you can use whichever page you'd like, but I would recommend at least when you follow these tutorials, you start with our genome page and then you can go on to do some more later on. So this is the page we'll be examining. Now there's actually quite a lot going on in this page. There's this whole side panel, there's this guy here, there's this table of contents, and other than that we have a lot of different stuff. What we're really, really interested in is going to be this table down here. So it's about uh, two-fifths of the way down this table and it talks about our genome size. So it gives us a few different organisms, well, lots of different organisms tells us about the um, type, the name, uh, the rough genome size in base pairs, approximate number of genes, I think that's uh, yeah, it's right there, and also gives us a little bit of a note about it. So our end goal for this tutorial, um, this tutorial series, is going to be to take this data, scrape it off of the web, and save it into a CSV sheet. Now before we can save it to the CSV, or even scrape the data, we should see what kind of data we're dealing with and how it's structured. That's very important. So we're actually just going to right click on the page. I'm in Chrome by the way. You may have to go into Tools if you're using a different browser. But I'm in Chrome and we're just going to go Inspect. Okay, so like I said before, there's a very good chance that lots of you have used this Inspect tool before. But basically what this does is it allows us to view the um, composition of the page. So that's the CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, most importantly, that makes up this page here. So actually we want elements. I was just trying to make that a little bigger. Okay, so this is going from top to bottom of our, on our page. There's still a lot going on. So what we're going to do is try to find out where this table is located in the code. If you um, actually highlight different parts of this page in the elements portion, just down at the bottom left here, actually tells us where in the page we're examining. So what we'll want is going to be the part that highlights this table. So let's go down until we find it. So this is highlighting the table under body content. So let's see under body content whereabouts we are. What we're wanting is going to be this div here, MW context text. Okay, and I think it is probably within this div here, this parser output. So let's see if we can find a table. Okay, so we've got one table here that's a little further up. 
will actually go all the way down to the bottom. I think it's going to be this guy here. All right, so let's examine this table down at the bottom here. It looks like this is the one we want. If we want to just double check that, let's just make it a little bit bigger. We've got this table. Okay, that's good. This is a paragraph before it. And so, yeah, that's exactly the one we want. Okay, so um, let's just make that bigger. We know which table we want. There's a bunch of information about the um, head of the table. This is basically just all of our headers. And then in the T body, we have the main structure of it. So here's each of the rows. Hopefully you know a little bit about tables, but basically tables typically, in well, in HTML, tables typically have the headers and then the actual data, which will be in the table body. Each of these is a table row. So we'd have the column one, column two, three, four, five, and six. In fact, I think it's just one, two, three, four, and five. So take, for example, our head here. This is the very first row. We can see that the classes of header sort, the uh, table index is zero, and we want organism type as the actual HTML text within there. So organism type, that's exactly what we see here. The next is organism. After this, we see, um, I think the it's actually hidden here, so we have to open up. We see genome size, and then we have in brackets base pair, and then we have this reference here, which is why we can click on that. After this, we have our number of genes. Yeah, that's this guy here. And then we have this last one, unsortable, which is uh, note. So that just displays this note here. These classes will probably not need to pay attention to. I think that's just a way to sort the data and then note there's you can't sort by that, which is why it's unsortable versus header sort. OK, so what about the body? Let's just double check. We'll take a look at the very first row. We'll take a look at the table data here and we get virus. So it's a link to virus. We get this text virus. OK, that's right. The next one, if we open it up, is going to be the actual title of this um, porcine circovirus. Hope I'm saying that right. It's going to be this first one. And then we get type one. Then we get the number of base pairs. OK, the genome size. And then we have a note about it. OK, so we know that this is the table we want, and this is a particular piece of data that we're really looking for. Now, when we first scrape it, basically, we're going to retrieve the entire page's worth of data, and then we're going to sort through all that data and pick out the pieces that we want. So basically, we'll be able to get the whole page, then we just want this table, and we can pretty much discard the rest of it. So one last thing I want to say before we leave here, it's always a good idea to check your classes. Likely we'll have to access this table based on its class or some other way of identifying it, because I think there's actually a couple of tables throughout this code. Um, I think there is one a little further up when I was examining the page earlier, I saw it. There it is. It's a different class. So we'll likely be accessing this table based on its class. Otherwise, do have some fun with this. Maybe it will be worth taking a couple of minutes to inspect the rest of the page and try and see how it's structured and how you might retrieve the data that way. OK, so when we come back, we're going to start up a new Jupyter notebook and we're going to get to actually retrieving and examining this data there. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in that next section.